Let's start by talking about the most common UI mistakes. And these are the mistakes you can go and directly fix on your Figma file. The first one is your text is just way too large. Go check the body font size of any of your project. Is it larger than 16? If it is larger than 16, too bad it is way too large. Because the most common font size for body font is actually 16 pixel and 14 pixel. If the body font size is too large, then your project could look very unrealistic. And this is a very commonly made mistake because when we design things in the Figma workspace, everything appears to be smaller uh, because we usually zoom out so that we can see the entire frame. But if you actually play the prototype on the side, or if you actually play your prototype on the mobile phone, you can soon realize that if a font is too large, you can just tell that this is too fake. So change all your body font to 16 or 14 pixel, and that will solve the problem. The second most common mistake is using accent color all over the place. Accent color is the special color that's usually used for call to action buttons. For beginners, it's very likely that you might make the mistake of using accent color at the wrong place. I've seen people using accent color for background, making the entire background orange and then layer white text on top. Please don't do that. I've also seen people using accent color to fill in the header and bottom navigation. Please don't do that. This accent color will draw attention and make people focus on looking at the header in the bottom navigation. That accent color shall be used on the only call to action button at that page. It could be buy now, start now, register, join the email list, next. The call to action button is the entry point to the next step of the user flow. So if you don't color that area and instead color something else, users will be very confused on what's the next step. So go and fix that now. The third common mistake is when you fail to keep a shape proportional. And this happens very often to circle elements. Take Instagram for example. If tomorrow you open up Instagram and then you see your stories looking like this, would you be happy? Probably not. So when you are on Figma and if you want to resize a circle, a rectangle, or if you want to adjust a line, make sure to hold shift on your keyboard. If you hold shift, it will keep the original proportion. And similar thing if you want to copy paste an element. If you do command C or control C, control V, if you want to relocate the element, hold shift and then when you drag it, it will stay in the same line. Or else you can also hold alt on your keyboard or if you're using a Mac, hold option on your keyboard and then hold shift. And then ta-da, it's going to be a straight line. So now you know. And if you've made any of these mistakes, you need more UI practice and Figma practice. And I can help you with that in my crash course. You can check out the link in the description to join the waitlist. Now let's move to UX mistakes and product thinking mistakes. These are mistakes that you cannot easily fix because you might need to redesign your entire product. Let's start from the first one. If you are a beginner, you are very likely to just go directly into a project with a scope that's way too large for one designer to design. For example, I've seen some of you guys design an entire e-commerce app. Hello? You designed one entire e-commerce app as one designer in your first personal project? It's like you are still learning to stack bricks together, but you go ahead and then build a castle. I really suggest to narrow down your scope when it comes to your first few personal project or client project. Because designing one e-commerce app, designing one entire food delivery app, huh, the scope is pretty large. Do you know how many designers are there in Amazon, eBay, and DoorDash? I don't think I can fit any of those groups in my home. So narrow down your topic. If you want to go with e-commerce, go with one specific small problem in e-commerce. And you can say, hey, I designed this new feature for the Amazon app. I designed this new feature for eBay app. If you want to design a product all by yourself, narrow the scope. Don't be like, hey, I designed an e-commerce app that can do delivery, that can view this, view that, all the coupons. Design one flow that can solve a clear customer problem and make money for the business. Another thing is about the format of your product. 99% of the time, you shouldn't be designing an app. You should be designing a web app or a responsive website. Let's think about this. If I go into a cafe and want to order an espresso, and then you tell me, download an app first, please. Why would I download an app to order one espresso in a cafe that will only visit one time in my life? If you are the customer, would you be happy? No. Also, I only have 500 MB left, so I'm not gonna use that to download your app. What I'm trying to say is that if you've designed an app, you need to think about 
will new user actually be willing to download the app as the first step of their user journey flow? And most of the time, if you have this step that you need to download an app first, you are already going to lose 90% of your customers, which is horrible to the business. So what you shall do instead is designing it as a website. Scan a QR code, opens up a website, and ta-da, here's your product. And following that, if you are designing a website, 90% of the time, you shall go with mobile first. When it comes to responsive website, it's a very common mistake to go with desktop first. More and more people today are opening up their website on their mobile phone. And I have a real life example. I've worked as a design lead for an Indian slash Seattle based startup and their target user are Indian startup tech founders who want to get their company incorporated in the United States. And 90% of their customers get to know their product by words of mouth from a link from one of their startup friends. So they are going to open up their link on their mobile phone from WhatsApp. But they hired a web design agency that designed their entire website using a template and going with desktop first approach. And that's just really bad because 99% of your customer are using a mobile phone to open up that website. Think about what they will do when they see that it's not even responsive to a mobile phone. They're going to close it and be like, when I go home, I'll open it up on my laptop and they'll forget about it. That is another way to lose 90% of your customers just by designing for the wrong device. Well, technically speaking, a good website shall be adaptive to both mobile and desktop. And I'm not saying that you shall only design for mobile. I'm saying that you shall design for mobile first, and it will be easier for you to then design the version for desktop, not the other way around. And following that, please don't make the first five pages of your design a significant long login, sign up, and onboarding flow. I've seen so many junior designer case studies where their entire app are only like 10 pages long, which is by the way, very, very small. And then there's five pages for onboarding sign in, sign up. How different can a sign in and sign up page look? And also if you're designing for a product, the entire first five pages are sign in, sign up, on onboarding flow. If I'm a recruiter, I'm not going to hire you because I think you're going to design products high drop of rate. If a customer don't even know anything about their product, why would they sign up, sign in, or onboard themselves at the first place? So please make the entry point very easy for the user, make your product understandable, build enough trust before you ask them to provide their email, sign in, sign up, and onboard themselves. An analogy of this mistake would be, would you still keep watching my video if for the entire first five minutes, I will be talking about, hi, what's your name? What's your email? Have you finished the Google certificate course? Check out my course, check out my course onboard yourself, log in, sign up. Why would you do that if you haven't built your trust with me and don't understand what I even do? So if you've made any of these mistakes, don't worry, now you know how to fix them. And also please don't feel bad if you've made any of these mistakes because companies who've had millions of dollars of investment also make these mistakes. So it's really good that you learn about it now. If you like this video and want a part two, comment a victory sign emoji in the comment section and I will think about it. Other than that, check out the link in the description and I will see you in the next video. Bye!